Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the motor effect and how we can produce that motor effect by having a magnetic field which disturbs the conductor and makes it move. So in this video we're going to cover a couple of the variables that we can change to make it move more or less depending on what we change. I'll read the actual dot point. It says discuss the effect, I should use a different color, discuss the effect on the magnitude of the force on a current carrying conductor of variations in the strength of the magnetic field in which it's located, the magnitude of the current in the conductor, the length of the conductor in the external magnetic field, the angle between the direction of the external magnetic field and the direction of the length of the conductor. So we have to look at changing these four things and seeing what it does to the amount of force being produced. So these four things are represented in this formula as well. F is what we're actually looking for, so we're looking at how much force is affected. F stands for force, and that can be put into in the units newton, that's measure in units newton. B is our first thing, the strength of the magnetic field. So this is our strength of the magnetic field, and that's measured in teslas, teslas, or TA. Now we have this as well, we have Actually, I think it's only in T, not TA. Um, we have this, this is our current. And our current is measured in amps. We have this being our length, which we also have as our four-third. So L for length. And that's measured in meters. And this is sign theta. I, I'm German, so I don't know if this is how you would say it in English as well, but we call it sign theta. That's just the, the this, the angle of sine. And this determines, for example, if we have our rod here, our conductor, and our magnetic field here, then the actual sine would be 90 degrees, it's perpendicular, right? So this here would be the actual angle, which would be between your magnetic field or your magnet and your actual conductor, which would be 90 degrees. In this case, sine would be 90, sine theta. Uh, so these are the things we have to look at. This is the formula we're going to manipulate to find out what happens when we change these variables. So again, this is the same formula here. And we'll look at each bit by bit and then go through why that happens well. Because we have to also discuss why that would happen. So first is the strength of the magnetic field. So what happens if we change the strength of the magnetic field? Remember that was just the B here. So that was the B here. So what I've done here is I've got the same formula twice and I've kept the other constants. So I've kept the current, the length and the actual sine theta, so the angle, all the same. So sine 90 gives us one, so I just imagine, okay, one for here, one for length, one for current, just because we're just testing what the actual magnetic field does. So if we had B, which stands for our magnetic field, if we had that at one, we would get a force of one. If, if that were one. But let's say we first we increase it. So we increase it from one to two. So two times one times one times one, that gives us a force of two. Whereas if we change it, if we lowered the magnitude, so the strength of our magnetic field to maybe 0 0.5, so halved it from the original one, then that 0 0.5 times one times one times one, because we kept all the other ones constant, and that would be a force of 0.5. So what you can see here, if we increase our magnetic field, we increase it proportionally, so it, the actual force applied is increased proportionally, which makes sense because we're timesing it. And if we're decreasing it, that means we're decreasing it proportionally as well. So if we half it, then our force goes down by half as well. And all that makes sense because if you think about it, obviously the magnetic field is what we're pushing. So here this is the thing, this was the same one we had last time. And the magnetic field from the mag magnets is what we'll be pushing into the magnetic field of the conductor. If that's twice as strong, then the movement, the force applied, will be twice as strong as well. And that makes sense. So that's for B. If we increase B, then the force will be increased proportionally as well. So that's the first part, cover the first part. The second part was the magnitude of the current in the conductor. So what happens if we change the current? So if you move more current for the conductor. So if we had, let's say again, we had kept everything constant, but you just changed the current this time, because that's what we're looking for. So here, we put the current away, and we put different values. And the same values last time, just to show you 
simplify the example. So we had it at 1 initially. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 would have been force of 1. But now we had here, we put force of 2. And on a lower example, put a force of 0 0.2. It's just what we did beforehand. And now we have 1 times 2 times 1 times 1. Now we have a force of 1 of 2 in the top example. And 1 times 0 0.5 times 1 times 1. That's a force of 0 0.5. So when we doubled the actual current, we also doubled the force. Whereas if we halved the current, we also half the force. Which also makes sense because what the current does, the more current we have moving through the actual conductor, the stronger the internal magnetic field. So in this internal magnetic field here, which the actual conductor produces, will be stronger if we have more current flowing through. So you can imagine this magnet, what it will do, it will push against the even stronger magnetic field and it will make that change, that force of it be being pushed away even bigger. So if you have a big magnetic field, internal and external, clashing against the other, that will make a greater force. So if we have a greater current, that will create a greater internal magnetic field and that will produce a greater force between the magnet and the conductor. So if we increase our current, we increase our force. If we decrease our current, we decrease our force. That's what it was the relationship for the second one. For the third one, the length of the conductor into internal magnetic fields. Now we're looking at this. So if we have, again, we have everything the same, we're just going to change our L's. Again, we're going to use the same examples just to show what happens. So 2 for the top and 0 0.5. So the same thing. If we let double our length, our force will be 2. So here it will be doubled. Whereas here, our force will have half from the original, which means if we double our length, then we've doubled our actual force applied. If we've halved our length, we've halved our force applied, which also makes sense. The length that we're talking about here is length of the conductor, so this here. So you can imagine now it's one meter, then we increase it to two meters. And that two meters doubles the force. And the reason why is because now we have more area that is actually covered. So you have more penetration over the magnetic field, which also increases the force as well. So the third one was, last one, sorry, the, was the angle between the direction of the external magnetic field and the direction of the length of the conductor. And I said that was a sine theta. And what you can imagine here is we have three different examples. I've chosen sine 90, which if you put it in a calculator, you get 1 for that. I've chosen sine 45. If you put that in a calculator, you get 0 0.7. I've chosen sine 0, so 0 degrees, and that's a 0 for that. And that's the angle between the actual, so the between the conductor, carrying conductor, and the magnet. So this here would be 90 if they're perpendicular. If they're, if this is our actual conductor, and this here is our magnet. Now they're parallel, so we have an angle of zero degrees, and that will create no force at all. Force. So if we have this sine zero. 1 times 1 times 1 times 0, that's a force of 0. If we have a sine 90, then it's 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, that's a force of 1. And if we have sine 45, that's 0 0.7, so 1 times 1 times 1 times 0 0.7, that's a force of 0 0.7. So you can see the biggest force we have is if we have sine 90, so when they're perpendicular, that's when they're perpendicular. The smallest force we have is when we have sine 0, because that means we actually have a parallel and I'll go over why that produces no force in a second. But then if we have in between, we just have a smaller force, but the biggest force is if we have sine 90. Now I'll just, I'll show you visually why that happens. The first example was this here. If we have sine 90, this was sine 45, the second example. And third example was that parallel. So when we have the first example, what happens is we have that being produced, the actual magnetic field. And because it's right in the path on the same plane as the actual magnetic field from the internal one, what's going to happen is we're going to have lots of force being applied, and it's going to be pushed away. It's going to be pushed away. Whereas if we have parallels, so now here, what you're going to have is these will just fit through the actual magnetic fields, and they won't push anything away because they can actually fit through it. Because remember, magnetic fields can't touch. They're not allowed to touch. So if you actually have these coming toward that magnetic field, something has to give, and what's going to give is the, this actual magnetic field is going to give, 
And when this gives, the internal one, it's going to move the conductor along as well. It's going to move it away. Whereas with this one, because it can fit through the actual lines, nothing will happen. There would be no force applied and nothing has to move. Whereas this one, which was the one that produces the actual force, which is in between force sine 90 and force sine 0, so it produces 0 0.7, which is weaker than sine 90 but stronger than sine 0. The reason why is because the actual force lines, some will be able to just squeeze through, whereas other ones will be able to hit the actual magnetic fields, or not hit, but just before they hit, they push them away. So this will be create some force that pushes away. The most force is created here, which is when we have it perpendicular. And no force is created here when we have it parallel with the actual conductor. So that's what you should know. I'll go through the, all the actual dot point parts again. First was what happens if we have the strength of the mag magnetic field, which is located changed. If we have it increased, that means the actual force also proportionally increases. If you have it decreased, the, the force also proportionally decreases. It makes sense because if you have a strong magnetic field, that means it can interact stronger with the conductor as well. The second part was the, magnetic, the magnitude of the current in the conductor changes. So that's how much current passes through. If you have the current increasing, then the force will proportionally increase as well. If we have the current decreasing, then the force will proportionally decrease. And it makes also sense because the actual conduct, the actual current inside produces a magnetic field. And the more current we have, the stronger is the magnetic field, the internal magnetic field. And that means that once they have that pushing happening between the external and internal magnetic field, if it's stronger, the internal one, that means there's going to be a bigger push. It means there's going to be more force as well. The last, the third one was the length of conductor. So we said that if we increase the length of the conductor, the force will be proportionally increased as well. Whereas if we decrease the length of the conductor, we also have a decrease in the force being produced. And that makes sense because the length, longer the actual conductor, the longer the piece here, the more lines can work on it, so the more force is applied. And then the last one we have were the angles. And we said that sine 90 was when it was perpendicular, so when we had 90 degrees. And that produced the maximum force because you had all of those magnetic lines almost clashing with the internal magnetic lines. And that created that push away because you can't touch. So before touching, it'll push them away. Whereas we had no force being produced when we had it parallel. So in this example here, the parallel example, because four lines would just pass through, they wouldn't be able. To, they wouldn't have to hit. Whereas sine 45, which was in between the two, created 0 0.7 force compared to one and compared to zero. So it's in between the two because some of the lines were forced out with other lines which just passed through. So it was not as strong as sine 90, but not as weak as sine O, so sine 0. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.